Hello everyone, welcome to One Up Game TV. I'm your host, Denny Marler. Today we are here from Smoke at Aces Barbecue in Popper Bluff, Missouri to interview a worldwide billiards legend and trick shot artist, Mike Massey. We will cover topics from trick shots, pool championships, and his Christian ministries throughout the world. First of all, Mr. Massey, I'd like to thank you for giving us time in the interview today. Uh, I'll just dig right into the questions. My first question, uh, you've been all over the world for me. What have been some of your favorite places and why? You know, that's, that's hard to say there. I've, I've played in uh, about 40, over 40 countries now. And I love Europe, you know, for the beauty of the country, like Switzerland and places and China and some of the third world countries I go to, you know, I, you know, I, as far as my favorite, you know, I, I, I don't know if I have a favorite, you know. And we, uh, you know, I, I still try, I was in Argentina a couple of months ago, the first time been to South America, you know, and I uh, enjoyed it there. But uh, I go all over the world. We actually, I guess you might ask me later on, I don't know if you know it's on there, but, you know, I, I uh, we have a, a gospel uh, trick shop ministry who's all over the world uh, spreading the, the news about Jesus, you know, and that, uh, so we go to, like I was in the Philippines for a month last year, and, so anywhere I go, you know, God's there, and I love the people, and I love the spread, spreading the word. And I was in Egypt in 2011, out in the middle of the desert, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know. That's and, right. Uh, using a pool table, so any, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, God's everywhere, and anywhere I go, He's there. And, and uh, right. you know, if He puts the love in your heart, you can see the beauty of the world, you know, and of course, you can see all the... Struggles and everything and stuff, but you know, that doesn't. Sure. Uh, there was a time that you were performing on and playing competitively on ESPN. Did you realize the impact you and the other pool players were having on everybody then, the magnitude of it? Well, yeah, gradually, you know, it started in 2000, year 2000, and that's when they actually started showing, having the first, which I, I say, real trick shot competitions, you know, it was in the year 2000, right. and uh, I won the first five out of seven, I think it was, and it was amazing the power of TV, because then everywhere you, st you start going, the people who don't even play pool, they start recognizing it and everything, you know, and, and people, you don't have to play pool to enjoy the, the trick shots, you know, watching the trick shots, so it wasn't necessarily just pool players, as everyone, you know, and, and it's a big impact. Uh, on the sport, you know, and now, I mean, if you looked on YouTube now, you got, I mean, all kinds of people doing trick shots. It's amazing some of the people, <laughs> the shots that people's come up with now. Right, yeah. right. Uh, uh, you once set a world's record for most racks running a nine ball in a 24 hour period uh, on live TV in Austria, 330 racks. Mm -hmm. uh, the stamina alone is incredible on that. Uh, tell us about that day. Was it? Exhausting. Well, it, it was. I, I, I did that three times or four times before, not not playing that ball, but playing other ones, you know, but I was in better shape. Now, at that time, I was in pretty good shape. I was like 40, 46 years old, maybe or so, somewhere like, probably like 20 years ago. And uh, I, it was playing the ghost. And what, playing the ghost is you, you break the balls. And after the break, you take cue ball in hand and you're trying to run out in, in rotation. So I had 330 break of runs, you know, in a 24 hour period that's with no combinations, you know. And I thought I could do 500, you know, but uh, after 12 hours, uh, you know, I, I wanted almost to quit, you know, after 12 hours. I, I was in pain. Because you didn't have to, not just talk at the moment, but I had to be accurate too. And I started off, I was doing about probably 25, 26 break and runs an hour, you know, you know at that pace. And there's a tile floor just like this. The pockets were tight, they didn't trim the pockets, so the pockets were pretty tough, you know, on the table. And uh, it was live television, but live, what they would do about every three hours, they would come and show it. It was on national TV there, you know. So they would show their program, and about every three hours they'd come and show me, you know, you know, there. It was actually in the studio, in the studio. And then after 
the last four hours was, man, I tell you, I was in pain. I was only doing maybe six hours an hour, six racks an hour, you know, and I rest. And then after that, I had to go do an exhibition at the, the World Championship for the juniors. And I was up 30 something hours, you know, with that. I laid down for a while, but I couldn't really go to sleep. So I had to do a show for them. So it was pretty, pretty strange, you know, but, uh, and, uh, yeah, that was, that's pretty impressive. Uh, in, two, in 2005, you were elected to the Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame. How big was that for you? Well, that was big because that was uh, probably as high as you go in the pool, you know. And, and I was like the 50th person inducted, so you know, you, it wasn't like there's a big number, you right. know. And. Uh, it, it, it meant a lot, you know, because I felt like I, it, it, I'd done a lot for the game and everything stuff, you know, and the game had been, of course, good for me and good to me, and and, uh, and it was uh, it was meritori meritor meritorious, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, as a player, I could have got in as a player, but, but they didn't recognize the trick shot competitions that much as, as uh, like he did the nine ball. Now I was a national nine ball champion too. Right. So I could have got in both ways, but they could only put one in as a player and one in meritorious. Uh -huh. yeah, and uh, so Robin Bell, who was a player at the time, they could have put a woman in too. They put her in as a player and I got an, an American, you know. Right. All right. Out of all the tournaments that you won, which was the most important to you? Well, you know, of course, the trick shot magics, but uh, the national name on championships in 1982 was pretty important, you know, because it established me as a, as a I was doing a lot of shows at that time, you know, and I was known as a trick shot player. And before that, I was known as a player, but not a tournament player, you know. So, uh, and then I won some, you know, I won some other nine ball tournaments and everything. And then, and one of my first uh, major trick shot competitions actually was uh, I won the World Championships in snooker over in England, and that's a big one, you know, to win that and uh, maybe an American hoop there, you know. Right. And, uh, but all the most important, and, and I, won a, I won a pretty big nine ball tournament uh, here about uh, seven years ago. I was like 58 years old, you know, and it was with a lot of top players. And, Right. And that was, uh, I went undefeated and won the, out the January out in California. So uh, I had a lot of top players in it, so that felt good, you know. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I practiced for about two weeks, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, do you ever plan on playing competitively again? You know, I, 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 I don't even... Sometimes, I don't even like to compete that much. You know, I play when I do exhibitions, I play challengers. I like to, but but it's, I have a battle, I don't know, you'd have to be a Christian to understand what I'm gonna say is, and, uh, but I have a battle with the, with the ego and the flesh. Uh, you know, competition, uh, I'm not saying it's all bad or anything, you know, and you know, but but when I'm competing, sometimes like in a major tournament, so, and, and I can be honest with you, almost every tournament that I've won, when I look back in a spiritual sense, I mean, with the Lord, you know, see, it, was, it, it wasn't really true joy. It was more ego satisfaction. Right. And, and you know, it, it, and I found true joy is actually when you, when you play with the Lord. I mean, when you're not, you're not trying to beat somebody, you're actually teaching somebody or helping somebody or, uh, you know, just playing the game for the game itself. I mean, just enjoying playing the game. And, and I can't play with the Lord. I play with Jesus, you know. I play with, you know. And, and, and it's so effortlessly. And it's so sweet smiles. I mean, when you're in that, that spirit, it's just, uh, you know, when you're, you're being constructive, you're not, you know. But when I play in competitive sometimes, I feel myself sometimes the flesh pulling against my opponent's stuff. Right. And I gotta be honest, you know, that's the flesh, and I hate it. I, I don't like those feelings. Right. And he's supposed to be dead. So when you're a Christian, your carnal and nature is supposed to be dead, and you want to keep him dead, you know. And and that's the whole ultimate walk is is trying to crucify. You know, it says crucify yourself. You know, because 
when when he's in control, when that Oana nature is there, it's totally self-centeredness and, and self-nature. You know, there's no joy. I mean, you can you can gain the whole world, accomplish the world, and win a million food tournaments, but you'll never be happy. You know, but when you're doing something and you know it's for the Lord, and he, he's involved in it. Then there's joy, and it's everlasting joy, and it's, it's, it's everlasting in the kingdom, you know. And that's when uh, I've tasted that, and it's and there's nothing like it. I mean, I've, I've tasted a, a joy that I've never. I mean, I've had joy to try to overtake me a few times in life in the last couple of months or a few years, you know. And it's all biggest joy is knowing when I die that I'm that. Then I don't have to battle with the flesh, the devil, or anything, you know. But but the, the victory, you know, in like First uh, Corinthians uh, nine, uh, chapter two, you know, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered people's hearts what's in store, you know, for us when we die, you know, for the kingdom of heaven. And you can't, you know, if you sit down and try to figure out, figure out what heaven's like, you can't do it because. See, the flesh wouldn't mean joy anyway. See, right. and it's going to try to conjure up something that it would like. Yes. But God's got so much more in store for us, you know. And you know, when you know, like when a person's born again, you know, when Jesus says you've got to be born again, so we can't we can't figure it out. But He's going to He's going to deliver it to us, you know. Right. Yeah. And but that's the same way playing pool. I mean, I love playing pool, but the competition. Getting back to the question, I, I have a hard time competing. Uh, you know, it takes. Uh, I admire the players now. They got some of the great players now, and you know the work. And when I watch the Olympics, and you know the work that's put involved, you know, for these people to have the skill and everything they, they, they do. You know, it's, it takes a lot of determination and work. You know, and and, uh, and that's in my pool. I put a lot of work into it. You know, right. but there wasn't any true joy, really. You know, I mean, I received those checks and stuff. I needed the money. You know, oh, sure. <laughs> you have to pay my bills every sure. day. But I didn't have really a true joy, you know. And and I've experienced a true, true joy. You know, that's, 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 that's great. Um, seeing that you have found God. And, uh, What's that? Seeing that you have found God. Mm -hmm. uh, being in the bar atmosphere a lot, that's got to give you great opportunities to witness and yeah. to share. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any cases that there are people that you really think you've gotten to and, and maybe changed well, your life? Well, you know, I go all over the world to the ministry, but I was I was raised in bars. I mean, I was drunk the first time I was three years old. I busted a poker game when I was eight years old. I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day when I was going. I was an alcoholic, drugs, everything, you know. And... Uh, and I was under bondage. I was a slave. I was like a puppet on the string, you know. And that's what it is. We're under bondage. We're enslaved from the time we're little kids. When we're, when we're, from the time we're born, the devil's trying to kill us, you know. You know, because he's going to hell and he wants everybody else to go with him. So he came to kill Rob and Story, you know. So my message is, is you know, Jesus says you've got to be born again. And when you're born again, you can walk on the devil, see. And anything... It's not saying you're perfect, and the spirit is, but you still got to grow and everything. But all things become different. You know, sometimes, I mean, I walk out, sometimes I'm in harmony with the butterflies, the birds, and nature, and trees, and everything and stuff. Right. And, and so much love and appreciation and, and everything, you know, for God. And I don't get into worshiping all that. In fact, I worship the Creator, you know. Right. I mean, but I still wrestle with things that try to come up on me. I mean, I, you know, uh, I've been tortured. You know, I've been actually tortured. And uh, I had a lot of questions, you know. But I have no more questions. I know that God is a great, wonderful, loving God. And he gave his son to, to die for everything I've done wrong or you've done wrong or anyone's done wrong. He suffered my sins. So when you accept that and you hand it over to him, you don't have to keep... You, you know, there's no condemnation, you know. So he suffered for my sins, but I can't keep on sinning. I got, you know, I, I got to walk, you know, he says you, get, you can't serve two masters, you know. Right. And when, and you know, so it's a war that goes on to try to walk that straight and narrow, you know. But when you do, that's what joy and peace and, and happiness and everything comes from. And if people's going to do you wrong, you got to keep forgiving, you know, and you got to walk, walk the way he says to walk, you know. And uh, it's uh, this world world in bad shape right now, you know. And it's 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 uh, 
uh, and that's my that's the only reason I'm really left on earth. I know it's just to tell people about Jesus, you know. That's and uh, I, I, you know, I, I, it's I, I'm, I mean, death. I know it's victory. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Right. I, I'm not afraid to die in war, and, right. and I know that you know. And when you know that, you, you can have a peace because you know, hey, when you, you die, it's, it's cause we're all gonna die. You know, I'm 66, almost 67. I might live be another year, not be another 10 years. I don't know. You know, but uh, but while I'm here, or left here, I want to try to uh, walk that walk. And, and lead others, you know, and, and sow a seed or whatever, you know, whatever it is. But also, that, you know, and it shows you how they enjoy life. Like I said, that joy that it comes from, you know, you got to actually have to pray for the right motivations for things, you know, because I don't know how to do it. I got to keep leaning on Him, leaning on Him, because I know how weak I am. So I got to keep leaning on Him. But when you do, you know, he 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 uh, casts all your burdens, all your problems, just casts them out. He's a big God, you know, and that's what we're supposed to do: just cast everything to Him. That doesn't mean you sit at home and just watch TV and stuff. You can be productive. Oh, he gives you talents and gifts and abilities, and shows you how to use them for the right motivation, you know, and how to walk on the devil. You can walk on the devil. See, the devil is supposed to be on your feet. He was defeated at the cross, you know. You know, he was defeated. So you can walk in that victory. When you walk in that victory, you're not supposed to be afraid of him. You gotta realize he's real and everything, but you're not supposed to be afraid of him, you know. Right. And you got the Almighty God, Jesus that crushed his head. So he crushed him, you know. So you walk when you walk in that victory, you walk in Christ, you know, you've got you got the victory. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, in closing and I have a feeling I know the way you've shown your passion for Christ. Uh, basically, in closing, what advice do you have for the up-and-coming billiards players? Well, the enjoy the game. It's, it's a beautiful game. You know, yes. I love playing. Still love playing the game. It's a, uh, you know, but uh, be careful. You know, but not just not pull any, any sport or anything. You know, right. don't let it become your god. You know, you know, don't don't get too caught up in winning. You know, I mean. Uh, you know, you can, like I say, you can win a million pool tournaments, you know, but if, you know, all you got to do is look at TV and see all these sports figures, all these people making all these millions and millions of dollars and doing all these things, accomplishing all these things. But do you see any of them that's really joyful? You know, and every day you hear somebody in the drugs and now they start taking drugs to perform better. I did the same thing, you know, when I was a hustler. And why, if you get too caught up in winning, you know, maybe start taking uh, maybe drugs to make you play better or whatever, you know, and then you destroy yourself. And and that's what's right. happening with the world. But the world can't know God. See, that's the thing about the world. We have no God. And, that is, and uh, the world's ways is totally different, you know. And uh, Satan's a God of the world, you know. So you got to, and so take your talent, your abilities, and get, yes, and think, try to get close to the real God, and it's through Jesus. You know, and, and he'll show you ways to enjoy the game, fellowship with people, you know, where I can play with you and we can show each other things, and, and, you know, and, uh, and you can really enjoy the game. But if you need to come here, you know, don't let it, uh, it's a beautiful game, but don't, don't let it become your, your idol. You know. Well, we appreciate your time, Mr. Massey. Yeah. Uh, I know you got a show to do here in a little bit, a little, a little uh, teaching. And yeah. uh, we really appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.